I'm Sid, and these are my best friends. My mom, Kim. My dad, Ty. My sister, Maddie. And our salty dog, Stella. We started our adventure refitting a Lagoon 450 before taking on the massive project of resurrecting a sunken 2021 Leopard 50. It's been one heck of a ride, but we're on this adventure to die with memories, not dreams, and live dauntless. All right, guys, we are mere days away from having our DC air conditioning up and running and moving on to our boat, finally. But before we could talk about 48 volt DC air conditioning, we wanted to take a quick second and circle back to a really hot topic, especially this time of year. We're currently in the rainy season here in Florida, and that means regular thunderstorms. So it also means lightning. Today, we're going to revisit the topic of lightning prevention. First, we wanna give a huge shout out to our patrons, Scott and Lori, for sharing their reasoning for adding the lightning prevention system to their boat. While Scott and Lori wait for a weather window to come from the Bahamas with their boat to Fort Pierce, where we are, Ty is gonna break out some of his old skills and tools that he hasn't exercised since April of 2020, because he's going to have to weld with his TIG welder a mount for the CMCE lightning prevention device that's going to be installed on Scott and Lori's boat after they arrive from the Bahamas. <laughs> so get ready for some welding, some really cool chemistry, and a sit down with a really fantastic couple. If you're curious about a refresh on the technical side of that CMCE lightning protection device, we'll put a link in the description below for the video that we did a couple months back when we installed it on our boat. All right, guys, I'm on top of the mass of 42 our patrons and viewers that uh, come here to Fort Pierce to have me help them put on a lightning prevention for their boat. And it's a very cool boat, carbon fiber mast. We're going to put that lightning prevention right here on top. I know it's a little windy. I apologize about that. I'll kind of hide you here from the wind. But um, no, this is a fun project. And I uh, can't wait to show you what it looks like when you put this on a boat while it's up in the air and uh, show you how we're gonna protect their boat from lightning. Okay, let's get back down to the bottom and I'll go finish uh, mocking this mount up and getting it anodized for them. And we'll be back in two days to put it on. All right, so I have made this uh, riser piece for uh, Scott and Lori for their lightning prevention. And I've also made this fancy base. Ooh, fancy. Nice welding. And it's all polished up. And the sad part is, is that I have to rinse it and degrease it in lye. And lye is gonna, I just need to get any finish off of this and any um, residue from the polishing compound. And the sad part, wah, wah, is that it goes from this shininess to this kind of yeah, you can satin. See the, the difference between that yeah. and that up there. So. I want to show all of you guys what it's going to look like before I dip it in lye. But um, I've got the solution and the bath mixed up. I am going to let that set for just a minute. I have a couple holes to drill. And when I'm done drilling and tapping these holes, it's all going to go for a drink. And then when that's it, I'm going to rinse it. And then we're going to anodize it, which will put a hard, protective, corrosion um, resistant coating over top of this aluminum so it can stay out in the weather on the sailboat. Okay, so I need to put some grub screws in, and if I can hold it up here, this is what a grub screw looks like. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. It's like a bolt that's been cut off. So I am going to put three in that will hold this pipe down in the base, and I'm also gonna do three more on this because that's what's gonna hold the device in this tube. So the way I do that is I basically mark 120 degrees apart, I've already put some marks here on the edge of the um, tube, and I'm gonna use a centering punch or a marking punch, and that puts a little dimple so that I can start my drill from there. There we 
go. Now the drill bit I'm using is just a skosh under the diameter of the tap. So this is a 7 30 seconds drill bit. This is a quarter 20 tap. Leave some burrs on the inside. So use a hard metal tool to break these guys free. A little countersink to clean up the outside edge. There we go. And now I can tap it. I'm just gonna tap this straight into the aluminum. I'm not gonna use any cutting liquid because I'm only going an eighth of an inch thick. So I've cut a lot of threads. Every time you feel a little bit of resistance, you back it off. They call that breaking the chip. So as you're cutting this, little burrs of aluminum or metal get pulled up from the inside diameter of the hole. And when you run backwards, this sharp edge here breaks the chips off. It's called breaking the chip. So then once you get it going, it spins right in just like that, like a bolt. All right. There it goes, just like that. Ta-da! Ta-da! Well, this is boring, so we're not going to keep showing this. We're going to move on. I'll be back in six more. <laughs> I'll see you in a minute. Okay. All right, so I've got gloves on. Just and this is the lye mixture in there? It is. You're going to see. I'm going to let it sit in there for about 20 seconds. Oh, wow. I hope this comes out on camera. That is crazy. So you can see the little bubbles coming off. And the lye basic solution is eating all of the contaminants off the outside. You can see the line right there? Yep. And it doesn't take very long. But you can see where the fingerprints used to be. So we have to get all of that off. So the lye is what takes that off? been cleaned and then this just etches the surface creates an etch layer so it's all turning holy cow it's like almost milky yeah it is isn't it yeah Isn't chemistry cool? Science is awesome. <laughs> so, 20 seconds is good, but I'm just making sure that it's super good. Yeah, there were some fingerprints that were pretty... some real chemistry projects. What are you doing? I'm pouring battery acid into a bucket in the kitchen. What does it look <laughs> like I'm doing? Oh my god. You have to mix battery acid and distilled water to create a solution to anodize in. And so we're being very careful. And is this the same deal where it just has to be enough so that the <clears throat> uh, parts are just completely covered? Yeah, but I've got to suspend them off of this in the air. So they can't be touching the bottom of the, the tank. Oh. So there's wire, which I'll get to here in a few minutes. Maybe you should film me later. We'll, we'll come back when Ty's done pouring acid. Okay, you focus and be safe. All right, mad scientist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to clean up my... We're anodizing shit. We're moving. We're doing all kinds of stuff. Yeah. All right, so do you see the bubbles coming off of the aluminum foil? 
we're anodizing and we're using those as our uh, anodes, cathodes, one of the two. All right, so I'm gonna start off with two, two amps. So this is a power, power supply. supply. So Highly recommend. We'll put a link in the description below. You can balance batteries, you can test lights, you can do all kinds of fun stuff with this. So I'm kicking this guy on. So I am gonna turn up the voltage at 12 volts at two amps and you can start seeing, look at all the little bubbles starting to form. The little bubbles. And I'm gonna let that sit here for just a couple minutes and then I'm slowly gonna turn up the juice so probably about 10 amps. Look at the bubbles coming out of that end over there. Isn't that crazy? Of that foil. Yeah. And how long does this sit in this acid bath? For about 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. The mad scientist. We'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> there is a hard anodized surface. Hmm. It even sounds different, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. You're so weird. <laughs> we are now. This guy slides right down inside of here. You do have to tap it in, so I'm not going to do it right now. But um, yeah, slides right down inside of there. And the device goes on top. And we are finito, ready to install. Super cool. Right? So excited. Let's go climb a mast. All right, so it's done. Look at that bad boy. And it's not every day you get to look at your own boat, right? Isn't she pretty? All right, that wraps up this install. So I'm gonna say goodbye and sign off here from Aloft. You guys have a great week and I'll see you next time. Okay guys, we are here with Scott and Lori. They have come to Fort Pierce for us to take care of something very important this time of year, especially on their boat. So Scott and Lori, tell us a little bit about yourselves, your experience in sailing and your boat. Sure, so <laughs> <laughs> we started this journey probably back in 2018 when we uh, chartered our first catamaran and we loved it and we said, wow, this could be a lifestyle. So. That's how we, that's how we got rolling on the, on this process. How long have you had your boat? We've had it for a little over a year now. Nice. And what boat is it? It is a Dolphin 460 out of Brazil. Out of Brazil. So how many dolphins have been made? Well, of this particular one, this, this model is 25 are made. Wow. Only, right? And then they stop production um, well, I don't know, economy, whatever, in Brazil or whatever. But anyway, and then they, there were, uh, there are 15 on the water at the moment. Wow, that's not very many. Mm -hmm. So what, what is it that got you interested or piqued your concern about doing lightning prevention? Um, based on Ty's video and uh, understanding that this product had already been installed on thousands of, uh, uh, shore-based installations, uh, cruise ships, uh, mega yachts, and other Panama and Canal. houses. Yeah. Um, that that was a another factor that led us to say this is something that uh, could certainly reduce our risk, and we're at thirty plus percent risk right now based mm -hmm. on our stats from other boats of our type. So um, that was another motivating factor for us to move in this direction. Yeah. 
we want to put in there, we want to thank Sailing Dauntless <laughs> for all of their consultation, their quick responses, Aww, and for helping us out with everything. Um, we just really, it's, this is what we love about the boating community, the cruising community, is everybody is there to help everybody, and um, thank you, Sailing Dauntless. Yay! Yeah, that was awesome. Yay. So, yeah. So watching the <laughs> storms as we brought our boat down from Charleston, South Carolina, uh, down the coast and looking at the storms yeah. and just understanding it's the one thing that we didn't really have any protection against and... and we know people that have been struck by lightning, their boats have been wiped out. And that's a fear, that's a real concern. Absolutely. So. And for whatever reason, of the 15 or so dolphins that are in lightning related areas, five of them have been struck in the last two years. So that's a really high percentage wow. for us. And not saying it's a, a characteristic of dolphin catamarans, it's just a very high percentage of the boats of this type have been struck. Uh, we have a carbon fiber mast, don't know if that's a, a contributing factor, um, yeah. but we do know that a large number have been struck. So we wanted to do whatever risk reduction that we could do. Mm -hmm. And after seeing uh, the video that Dauntless put together on lightning protection, that got us moving in this yeah, direction. Push you over the edge. This is a do-it-yourself project if you have some kung fu skills. Well, <laughs> and you guys did. So you guys had to run the cable while the mast was standing in right. order to save the expense of stepping your mast and doing it on the ground. Oh, yeah. Exactly. So tell me about your experience and how did you manage getting that wire in the mast? Uh, well, I went up, um, which I enjoy. I, enjoy. <laughs> um, I went up and took up a, a line up and um, my first time up and took up a line and tied it off at, and then it came all the way down the mast mm -hmm. and we before we even came here to Fort Pierce we had it ready because we weren't sure and then um, and then I went up a second time we tied or I guess taped you know configured the, the cable to the line I went up the mast pulled it up wear gloves <laughs> saying anyway um, tore up her hands tore up my bit. hands but yeah um, so, and then pulled the cable through and tied it off on top for Ty. Yeah. So it was ready for him to roll. You guys did a great job on that. So I think that that's another takeaway on this whole kind of piece is if you're able to get the wire run in your mast, it isn't necessary for you yeah. to step the mast in order for this process to get completed. So it took you guys, I don't know, how long did you work on getting that wire in the mast? One trip up there, trip. she was able to pull it most uh, all, all the way to the top mm -hmm. um, and, tie, and it tie it off. And then um, Ty, who had a lot of the uh, 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 tapping tools that were necessary Correct. for mm -hmm. mounting the base, was able to then yeah. um, you know drill the holes, put the put the taps in, mm -hmm. uh, and pull it through at that point. And get it finished. Yeah. So it took Ty about. I timed him. <laughs> yeah. Not that I was really keeping track, but it took him about two hours, two trips up the mast to be able to go up, drill the holes, and then come back down, reassemble himself, get rid of some extra baggage out of his uh, bosun's chair, and then take the device up and get it completely mounted on the top of the boat. So all told, the actual mast work was really only a few hours, and it was done while the mast was standing. So don't think that you have to drop the mast. Sometimes it's more convenient, and if you're going to be doing this and you're already planning on having the mast on the ground for other work, maybe you're gonna add some lights, radar, something like that, then having it on the ground obviously is easier and more convenient for installation, but it is not always required. So that was a good little lesson learned from yeah. that. So it was like less than the time it took him to put it up to, to get, the get to prep. Perfect. Yeah. And then you could also add that for, for people, so one of the key things that I think that's important about this product and this lightning protection effort is much like other technology, we need uh, sailors to install and advance and bring the cost of this technology down and also mm -hmm. get it out there so that you know the word of mouth 
um, yeah. uh, can help push the installs. Uh, I, I think the key thing that I took away from this is if you have the skills to do the drilling and tapping and mounting and, mm -hmm. and fabricating of your uh, base, it, it's, it's completely doable yourself. In, in our case, we had some of the skills to go up the mast and get the cable and get the prep work done. And then uh, obviously Ty had a lot of the construction skills necessary to go up there and get everything fabricated, mounted, and, and secured properly. So mm -hmm. that's, I mean, that's what helped us. That made it possible for us. Yeah. Well, and now you guys are protected. Yes. And exactly. you can actually, maybe we'll keep in touch, of course. And then yes. I'd like to see what your kind of statistical feeling is as we continue on this adventure and see what your lightning prevention ends up looking like. We're going to be invisible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes. Invisible lightning. Yes. yes. Exactly. We have uh, lightning detect proximity sensors as well that will give us a nice picture of how close the lightning is to us so mm -hmm. that'll give us the ability to maybe not you know demonstrate scientifically how well this product is working but certainly yeah. we'd be able to see uh, yeah. based on lightning proximity Mm -hmm. that um, we're in a lightning danger zone and, mm -hmm. um, you and know, probably come out of it safely. So I'm yeah. yeah. so looking forward to that. Excellent. And I can't wait to see that data. So Scott is going to make sure that he sends us yeah, some definitely. of that info once he's out in the water again. And we will share it with you so that we can keep kind of a tracking record of what's going on with this lightning prevention. So. Guys, if you haven't already, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and don't forget to click the notification bell so you get notified every time there's a new video out. We'll put links in the description below for the CMCE Lightning Prevention System from EMP Solutions. And yeah, don't forget to, I don't know what else I was gonna say. Annapolis Boat Show. Oh, yeah. Don't forget about your Annapolis Boat Show tickets. That show's coming up next month. I can't believe it. We'll put our code here on the screen. We can't wait to see you guys there. All right, we'll see you next week.